Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Talk. My name is Wellington Gomez, and I am your host. I'm here with my co-host. Hi, Kevin. Hey, girl. Your favorite bottom's here. Oh, Period. Hi. What's up, baby? I already Hi. know who it is. It's Edward and Miss T, and I'm doing amazing. So talk to us about what you're wearing. So today I'm wearing <laughs> Under Armour. This is not a sponsored ad, but we want to still thank our friends out there. But most importantly, today we're also rocking a half up, half down eyebrow look. Uh, so I started doing my makeup till <laughs> when you went to the gym and I was like, all right, I'm just going to do a natural beat and I got on TikTok live. And so like, natural. Natural for Eureka O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. Boom, boom, boom. So I covered the eyebrows up and then I'm going to shower. So I was like, you know what? Let's record. Let's get into what has been. And then, yeah. This is drag. This is drag. This is drag. You know, one minute you could be working on your makeup and the next minute you got to report, uh, record to the tuck. Report and record to the tuck. So listen. Um, so today we are doing a recap. Before we start into the recap, make sure that you guys are subscribing to our show on uh, Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Make sure that you are following us on Instagram at the Tuck Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. And make sure that you are subscribing to our the Reality Rundowns YouTube channel because that's where you can go and watch our video form of our episodes. Click away. So All Stars A episode six, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, Joan the Joan Joan right? Mm-hmm. Joan the uh unauthorized musical. Dun, dun, dun. Um, thoughts before we get into we watch the the musical and we get into the looks. It was cute. I mean, I'm not that type of gay that's like into Joan Crawford, but I mean, this is definitely going to hit those older gays in the heart, like Rue and Michelle. But honestly, for me, I don't know. It was, I mean, we'll talk about it later. I think the performances were phenomenal, in my opinion. But again, this wasn't like a, like a share of the Rusical or like a uh, Drag Race Vegas type of like deal for me. I was kind of like, oh, it's Joan. Okay. Period. That part. Well, I- I didn't really know who Joan was, so I had to do a little bit of research. Um, so watching it back, things started to make more sense, and I was yeah. more appreciative to it all. But I kind of had the same reaction at first. I was like, oh, I don't know how this is going to give right now. Right. But I accepted it. I perceived it. No, I mean, I'm, I didn't... I I didn't hate it. I thought it was yeah. I thought it was a good I thought it was a good rules to go. I'm not even going to lie. When I was watching, I was like, oh, the girls are eating. Um, who was it? Like, okay, so... You know it's a musical. Before you watch, who do you think is automatically doing okay? Like top two, go. Um, instantly, I was thinking Jessica and Alexis, just because Alexis has her history of doing Chris Jenner, and it was like so iconic. And then I would say that Jessica has not t- has not looked at a. But challenge. why would Alexis' history of Chris Jenner make you feel like she would be good for a musical if that was Snatch Game? Well, because it's acting. Ooh. Can you guys kiss? Musical. Yeah, but I feel like you're. She looks like a bitch who could sing and hold the no and hold the key. Like <laughs> I feel like you know, like she's not fully there where it's gonna be perfect. You know, where I would say maybe like Kahana. Like I expect from out of Kahana, I expect her to be like tw- have a tri- be a t- triple threat. And Alexis is someone who I feel like she's she has a little bit of experience in everything. She's like a jack of all trades. You know, so I'm like, okay, like, I think she's going to do good. And then Jessica, I just think Jessica hasn't looked at a challenge and been intimidated yet. Whether she's pre- presenting her best or in her head, I feel like she's, been, like, she's gone ho about I'm winning. Right. So that's right. my two. What about you? Uh, My two are, I mean, I'm not even going to lie. I felt like Rusical Candy Muse is going to do good. Um, Candy Muse did good on her Rusical, her season. So She, she was eliminated. What? On her rusical, it was the social media. She was eliminated. She was on the bottom two with Simone, and they kept her. Wait, wait, wait. She wasn't eliminated. If she made it. To, she wasn't eliminated. If she was top two. No, no. She was bottom two with Simone, and then. Well, what, but did she leave the show? Girl, she was uh, literally eliminated. And Rue said, "Wait, wait, wait." Wait, but wait, wait she leave The show. Oh, we slammed. But she was in the bottom. But did she leave the show? But she almost did. She rocked the disco one on her season. We knew that. She I did. loved it. She did. Uh, are facts are facts. Lucky was a hit. <laughs> so, if you're thinking Rusicals, of course I'm thinking Candy Muse is gonna is going to do good. She can dance, she can sing, she can hold the choreography, and she's entertaining. 
So she was one. And then, of course, Kahana Montrese because Kahana comes from Vegas. And this is like, you know, shows, Vegas shows, this is what they do. And I want to get into Kahana because people are dragging her. But I really want to get into Kahana. So let's watch the rusical. Let's get into and, it. Let's get yeah. into it. Fuck my drag. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> Production, take the rusical off. It's okay. <laughs> Who are your top two? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, Serena Chacha and Penetration. Play the clip. Play the clip. Penetration? Serena Chacha and Penetration. <laughs> I mean, I thought I automatically it was, was going to be James and Alexis because those they they obviously have an older style type of drag. Mm -hmm. Alexis has all the theater background training and everything. And with James, she kind of lives in that old 80s, 70s kind of shtick. So I really thought those two were going to excel in my opinion, but it's whatever. Well, let's see what happens. And I hope that watching this musical gets you hyped. Give me some energy, girl. I miss you. And now oh, the world for me. Well, that was good. Um, so I wanted to talk about Jimbo a little bit. Um, Jimbo did horrible. Oh yeah. Jimbo yeah, did horrible. Better. And I don't think that Jimbo did horrible. When we were watching it, I was getting like different uh feelings from the people that i was watching it with some people felt like jimbo was trying their like yeah, she was right. trying their best and like this was their best but i felt like jimbo was trying to not make himself a target because 100 he, ha he has three wins mm. he knows that you know he can he jimbo knows how to perform you're gonna tell me that jimbo's gonna do the performance that he did last um last week with snatch game and then this week she's just gonna but i do see some like hesitations because jimbo went home during the rusical when she was on versus the world so i could i could kind of see some of the hesitation in like her performance for this challenge but again like bitch she's just trying to play it safe because the target is on her back she's our front jimbo went home on uk versus the world not because she tanked the the shit she went home because she was big competition that let's part. let you know like so her using that story i call bullshit on that I think that she was just trying to not make herself a target. And as she should, because she's trying to win this competition. And you know, all stars, the moment you are on the top and you land at the bottom, they're going to take you out. Hello. So I feel like even when she broke down about her not winning the lip sync, some people, like, for example, when I was watching the pit stop, um, Bianca the Real was with Peppermint, and Peppermint was saying that she didn't think it was a good idea for Jimbo to have open up like that or break down like that in front of the other girls because then it kind of gives the girls a uh, feeling that like, oh, you don't want to be here, or you're like, or you or you're not, she's ready you know, go. she's like, you're breaking down, but you just want three, three, you know, like it's not a good sign to break down. When in when in my head, Jimbo just won three three different challenges. She should break down and act like yeah. she's struggling. So the like that, the girls do not make her a target. I feel like this was Jimbo's let me take myself out of the target zone episode. She was mid the entire episode. She and don't I be a threat. Like there, was, there was no coincidence in that. I mean, mid mid was James. Jimbo did not give mid. I would Jimbo not say deserved to be at the bottom. I would not say James was mid because James tried. And that's the I problem. Don't, I, don't, I don't think Jimbo tried. I think Jimbo was legitimately providing the performance that he wanted to provide. And that was that lackluster. I was whelmed. Like the person, yeah. like um, Karma from Roscoe said. She was like, I was just whelmed. And I feel the same way. I was whelmed. Yeah. I agree with that. You know, like it wasn't, of course, Candy stole the night. And she had an amazing performance, and there's, you know, no one can take that away from her. She had a great. What do you guys think about Candy? She took the night. You said it best. I feel like she. Well, I also want to say we just saw a whole side of growth from Candy and how she also communicates with everyone else. Because in that point, I feel like Alexis, and obviously we only seen what they're showing us on TV. But I feel like Alexis was probably in a way trying to antagonize her. Like, oh, what do you mean? Like, this is your role. Like, you just can't come and snatch your role. And she's like, I never said it was mine. I'm saying, like, that's my only option. Like, that's the one option that that's the one option that I want to pick. So, like, I'm going I'm to I'm do this one. And I feel like she handled it well. Not only did they make an audition, but, you know, she ate her little audition up and then ate it up on the stage. So I was excited to see it. Like, the number was good. It was a good high beat number. The song is catchy as how it's literally been. And on she has really, like, 
honestly good vocals. Like, yes, she's singing to be funny, like just talking about fucking wire hangers. But genuinely, like, I would listen to that song if it was just made by Candy Muse and it was three minutes long. Like, no. Candy exceeded all my expectations for this episode. And me too. I'm, you know, I'm glad it took episode six for her to shine. No shade. But genuinely, I think that it was her episode. Like, I agree. Her, her salute. And she taught Mariah how to sing, so maybe she can teach us. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so how about we get into these looks and, you know, we discuss the fashions on the runway. Category is... Um, Grace Jones. Is, 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 is. Uh, you can put it up. Knight of a Thousand Grace Jones. Category is Knight of a Thousand Grace Jones! Woo! So, I kind of like what they did with like Jim Crawford and, and like Grace Jones. That was cute. I thought that was funny. Like me? Yeah. Why you ask that? Can't, he just asked me if I'm getting dick after this. Why you ask that? Do you know. want to provide it for him? Like, what's good? Right. And no. if he was, what's tea? No, I'm not. The getting best dick be after the gym. <laughs> I don't go to the gym, but I know it'd be hitting for y'all girls to go to the gym. I know that after gym sex. And you're douching shower. Yeah, the testosterone, the testosterone definitely, um, definitely be pumping. But we're gonna keep that for sister talks, which we have an episode coming up soon. Um, and also while we're here, you know, promoting things, we have a very special interview <gasps> for this week. I'm so excited. We're gonna, Serena Cha -cha. we're gonna give you some clues. She's a winner. She's international. And she's hilarious. Tyra Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> so look forward to that interview filming this week. Um, let us know your guesses. Yeah, let us know your guesses. Okay, now to the looks. Alexis Michelle. I loved it. I thought it was so out of the box for her. I think that this is the most avant-garde you will see Alexis do anything. I Boots. think that this is Alexis stepping out of her comfort zone. She did it well. It looks expensive. She wasted, you know, this was very well-earned, you know, money usage. Like, she dropped the bag on this. The hat, you know, the headpiece is so well done. It looks exactly like the original. And I thought it was, I thought it was a slant. I'm, I'm wet. I'm wet. I'm wet. I'm wet. wet. I'm wet. It's a wet. It's a wet. Uh, first, I was just kind of like plain. But when you think about the silhouette that Alexis always presents on the runway, I was excited for to see something new. And also, I feel like the makeup looks refreshing. I feel like we've seen her in that wedding dress makeup. I hated that shit. And then she did her makeup for last week. I didn't really like it. So, yeah. This is I'm loving the versatility. Like, I'm like a makeup girl. So the fact that like seeing her like this entire season too, like her makeup has been like super unique, especially when she did the the reveal look and she had the really like I guess you want to say horror makeup, and then even this is very avant garde, very abstract. I'm yeah. loving the silhouette. I love the headpiece. I feel like you could tell it's Grace Jones, but you could also tell that it's done by Alexis Michelle. It's not like she's just wearing the costume. Yeah. And I think she honestly, it's a fucking wet for me. Like this is the best she's looked all season for me. No, it's definitely a wet production. Says that the shadow looks good on her face. The shadow from the headpiece. I can't tell that's shady. <laughs> like you're trying to cover her face. No, no, no. I think it looks good too. Because I like that she can actually like be bald. Yeah, too. like she's yeah. not afraid to be bald. I'm sorry, Alexis Michelle looks good and in and out of drag. I will be in them yams next. Oh God, that's right. I'll hit it from the back and slap the back of that head. <laughs> then we have Jimbo and. It, this is a regret for me. Um, I think that this is so this is so underwhelming. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, Jimbo was not in his right mind. Like, I am impressed by the hat and the headpiece situation. He made it. But even I'm just impressed. You know, it looks good. It looks expensive on him. But it's not, I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird. I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't. I feel like this look wasn't iconic enough for him to do and then actually me still get it. And I feel and I feel like, you know, some of the queens, some of the white queens, when they have to do like a night of a thousand black, someone that's black, I feel like they have some hesitation. But there's ways for you to still do the category and still look, even if you're from a different race. The oh, black queens Michelle. do it all the time when it's like night of a thousand white women. I mean, uh, Lala Reed just did it for the Joan. Like, I can see what you're saying. I'm like very whelmed. I feel like 
the I like the idea of the hat being hair, but for this, it looks like she just plopped it on. Like the 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 the, the there's no like real lace or real differentiation differentiation. Sorry, from her head to the wig. Um, again, like when I think of Jimbo, I think of really like moments on the runway. I think of like it's a story and it's like phenomenal and there's money spent for this i feel like this is probably one of the runways that she's packed that she's like okay like i'm just gonna throw it on and like they're you know it's gonna be good uh, it's a regret for me i feel like from what we've seen from jimbo thus far in this competition it's very yeah, low bar real. um yeah it just looks like a white woman with uh a random hat on i don't know i'm just not gagging like i should be gagging i want to be like oh, oh, oh. right now i'm like oh. yep well i feel like we also are we no, no 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 next no. next next no like there's nothing like we could what you're trying to say what i'm trying to say is that you, it's the same shit that you just said we hold lala reed to a different expectation even when she does good so it's like are we always holding jimbo to the always perfect like it's like it's not bad like we've got no this is bad but when we're used to like, like spectacular runways and like like last week's and like when she walks in, like she like i when i see jimbo on the runway i get excited because i know it's going to be a fucking moment and something that like we've never really seen for so for her to come out on this i'm like damn bitch like right i agree i agree what the fuck is good right right Oof. jessica wild and i'm sorry raja but you have competition in purple oh my god because Jessica looks stunning. Also, that was a joke. Raja is the queen of purple. But, wow. She wow. looks fucking amazing. Like, like, she, looks great. she looks amazing. It was it was great. Wet. Wet. I'm like wet all over. Her fucking mug, her body, everything. Like, just Jessica's, the fucking outfit. Jessica's path on this competition. Wow. You should be really proud of yourself, Jessica. Um, It's been great. It really, it really has. And I've loved watching Jessica come back and really kill the competition this way. Like, I am so happy. Like, she, production says she came to do something. Like, she, right. Like, she did not, like, she, she's not here to play. She's here to compete. And she's trying to get to the end. And honestly, like, right now, like, I'm really team Jessica. I'm I really like team every, Jessica. Every single second that she's gotten camera time, it has just made me love her more and more and more. And if there is a point where, one of these queens is shady and is not going off track record and send this bitch home. She got the fame game hands down. Like, oh, she's, boots. Leaving, she's either leaving with a crown or leaving with the fame game. Or leaving. no, I really think like, it will be iconic for Jessica to be crowned because it will be the first time that you know one of the her category of being like the Latina Puerto Rican queens. It will be the first time for one of those queens from those categories, like the Jara Sofias of the world. You know. The Jessica Wilds of the world, the Alexis Mattels of the world, like it will be the first time for one of those queens to win, and I think it will be a great win for Puerto Rico. I think it will the be a, it will be a great win for the Lion X queens. So it would be iconic, and on and honestly, it would be, it would also be disturbing. Like oh, Jessica fitting. has been eating it, so why not crown her? Also, I love how she's like a fucking like drag queen. Like she's not one of these like twenty one year old like TikTok girls who come on the show. Wear a little bit of makeup and just want to like go to episode two or three. She's a fucking drag queen. The beat, the body. So well. Whenever she's on stage, like everyone was saying, like she's at a hundred and ten percent as she should be. Like she, she came on this not trying to go to the top four, not trying to go to snatching. She came on this Prove season herself. to fucking win. And you, bitch, I was Team Jessica the jump from the moment I saw her on her fucking uh, promo. I'm fucking Team Jessica. Character. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah. Next. Then we have Kahana Montrees. And honestly, I was gagging. Like, mm. I love this. I loved it. I think that, you know, I don't know if, like, the reason why I love it so much is because she, she looks kind of like a Pokemon. Like, she looks like a Rosalia. Oh, like, a Rosary like, bitch. Get it into you it. You know, like, she just looks, like, I don't know. She looks dope. She looks mythical. She looks like a character, like, in a movie. I love this headpiece. I think it's done well. Like, I think it's a great interpretation to that look. That she's representing, I I loved it. I loved it. I think in interpreting the look and also making it her own with the showgirl kind of touch to it. At first, when it stepped out, I was kind of like, oh, like seen it before. But when they really got into the quality and then they showed the reference photo, I'm like, oh, now I see what she did to this. So definitely a wet, you know, tends across the board. And that bitch is gorgeous. She's gorgeous. I'm just bored, honestly, of like this. I get it. Like, I'm going to hold every queen accountable. Like, Edward loves to say he loves holding bitches accountable. I just feel like 
the whole Vegas showgirl theme, like we get it. That's where you're from. We get it. We get it. It was like holding a Heidi accountable for having the gap tooth logo on everything. Like I'm kind of expecting her next week to come out in something with feathers and with rhinestones. I would love for something a little bit more pulled back, a little bit more like avant-garde or something that we just haven't seen. Like something like Alex. I would love for her to, uh, to wear what Alexis wore just because I would never expect Kana to wear that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm continuously looking for her to like do something out of the box for her. I mean, it's a wet for me with the look, with the presentation. I mean, she looks fucking mugged down. Outfit's amazing. But again, it's feathers. It's rhinestones. It's the right. showgirl of it all. Like, I'm kind of bored with it. Like, I'm just, I'm waiting for what's next with her. And I don't know if there was going to be after all this, because. It... We got to see how that cookie crumbles. Then we have Candy Muse. And Candy Muse, you know, buzz down. Barbiana buzz down, eight down, like. Finger looking good. The maybe. only thing I would say, my only critique would be that she should have packed this differently because I can see how he bent over there, you know, <laughs> on the right side. Um, that's my yeah. that's really my only critique. But aside from that, this is dope. This is different. This is not, you know, I would I was gonna say this is not, I'm not this is not something that I will see Candy Muse in, but actually, this is something yeah. that Candy Muse in. Like she likes to always like kind of like um challenge i feel like flashing a little bit because yeah it's similar to the, and challenge herself the, as well like the alien mm -hmm. she oh my god that look third season it's like she was really trying to like go against the status quo and i feel like this is the moment she did it and it it paid it, off it paid off and it worked it paid off yeah it's a wet her mug for me is always like fucking oh just kidding fuck my drag silence oh, the white man it's cute okay next <laughs> Start the next one off, Kevin. You're festy. No, yeah. we can go. You can actually go next after this one too. This one was trash. Oh. <laughs> we could just skip this one as a whole. Yeah, it's honestly every grab. This I is bad drag, bad okay. drag, bad drag. It's 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 every grab. James, it's you're getting no the tuck screen time today because that shit was oh. gutter. Okay, so I'm gonna say this about this look. Lala Re ate down. Thank you. That's Lala Re ate down, and Lala Re was identical to Grace Jones. And Lalari was robbed of this look. The look, the the her performance, the the performance. Lalari Lalari was robbed, but she was on the top. I am, I am. It's still, still. I don't know. I don't know. It should have been on double because Lalari did really good. Maybe a triple because so did Jessica. I know we're splitting they, hairs. We're it was splitting hairs. We're splitting James Mansfield's mustache hairs because, again, I agree with you. This look was iconic. I mean, the only thing I'm going to continuously complain about is that, like, I liked her mug low key better on her original season. I feel like her mug has scaled back a bit too much to a more natural, like, woman, very beautiful woman. Whereas, like, this is like, I would love for her to take notes from her original season sister Candy on how to just be fucking give that cunt ass fucking mug the blush, the pullback, like the snatch of it all. Because again, like I think the look is fucking amazing. And this was her runway. This was the Grace Jones of, of it all. Again, it's just the makeup just takes me out of it because it's too it's too ordinary for an amazing outfit like this, in my opinion. But it's, it's a wet for me. I mean, that's a valid critique. I feel like she went heavy on like the, the femininity of the makeup and the face because they have no hair. But I'm not mad at that opinion. Grace oh my Jones. God. <laughs> the Grace Jones of it all. Next. Oh, that was it? Um, Wow. James wow, Manfield's wow, wow. outfit was so fucking bad. I'm sorry. I just have to give it more light. I'm sorry. I cannot believe she actually generally walked out on an all-star season with those lumpy ass metallic leggings that fucking boo-boo ass fur that terrible ass Trixie wannabe makeup. I'm sorry. Like, I actually hated that. I think that is probably the worst outfit I've ever seen on RuPaul's Drug Race any season. I will give it to her. That was no, the I worst. I don't think it was the worst. No, I don't I think give it, it was the worst. I think it was Not terrible. You think it was worse than the one Lala reward with the back? With the with but the, the thing is, like, it had personality. Or this jiggly. outfit was dry and and just disgusting. Do you think it was worse than anything Jiggly has worn? But Jiggly. Like no, no. So it's not the worst. Like I, in my opinion, it's my opinion. I think it was the worst. Are we considering the fame game? In what? In, in what sense? Girl, have you seen it? it? We should not be considering it at all. That runway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, have you seen Monica's um discography? Like, I'm sorry. Like, 
Can we please World of Wonder? The Fame Games was the worst idea ever. Like, why do I want to see eliminated queens? They were eliminated for a reason. Like a reason. Uh, I got, you know why? Because I like the Fame Game idea. Because if it was done good. No. But still, they spend a lot of money to get ready for this show, and it's fucking. Monica hard. spent thirty dollars on fucking garage and Sheen. Yeah, but that's also that's why Rue, because Rue, then these bitches want to end up having a whole different outfit. They're like, "This is what I brought," but like, "This is yeah, what but I that, yeah, present. that was kind of like Rue trying to check them too, because the Sisson fifteen queens or oh, Jax, if you're listening to this, you changed all of your looks on Instagram when you posted them. That doesn't this, count. This was gonna be my look, bitch. No, it was not gonna be your look. It was right. not going to be your I look. Think that this was going to be my look. This it is, wasn't. I don't think she said this was going to be my look. Some girls use that. Some girls use but, that. This was actually what I had planned, but then something last minute happened. Girl, it didn't happen. Like you Princess Poppy ready. was ballsy you enough. To, like I, Princess Poppy posted the sketches, the, which I, I thought was it. so cunt because the sketches they provided, Princess Poppy would have never been able to even touch those those sketches and she really had the audacity to say that something happened to her wardrobe that it didn't girl you weren't ready sasha kobe was ready listen sasha kobe's suitcase could have been lost that bitch was gonna take the walls and 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 and, and put them into fabric like and still look like stop you just weren't ready like take your l it is what it is well fame games like Whatever. We're I feel like such a loser. Game. Every weekend we're gonna talk about the fan games, and we still have not recorded the episode of the fan games. So I think that. Well, well, well I think well, I think well, we should wait opens, until like it well, until opens. opens. Yeah. <sighs> Literally, I was saying it though, but I <laughs> no, think <laughs> it was in my brain. And then... <laughs> it was in your brow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna wait until the fan game voting opens to talk about the fan game looks. And honestly, good ratings because some of these looks I don't want to like. Did y'all see about Jessica War? I mean, not Jessica. Nisha. Who is winning the Fame Games? Yeah, Michelle yeah. Visage. Because <laughs> these are fucking gutter boots. I'm sorry. No, the Fame Game it is bad. I hope that we can. And Nisha Lopez. Oh my god, baby! Like that. What? <laughs> Get these off my screen. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I have that outfit from Sheen. I literally have it. I am so sorry. What? Okay. Oh, my God. What's next? <laughs> this is all from Forever 21. Oh, no, I, but, but I can't laugh because, like. This is Fashion it? Nova. I literally have this outfit. It's from Boohoo. I literally have it. <laughs> I could literally pull it out right now. It's from Boohoo. Can you put it on right now? <laughs> I'm not tucked. That's, she didn't even dry her hair. Production says. <laughs> but like what was my this wig. Why are you? Is this natural on the runway? No. This is drag race. I'm not gonna hold you. I saw this part and I. It just gives me like like you like the <laughs> Doja Cat challenge with the red light. Like, but do you know what's the thing? If we saw this at boxers, we'd be gagging. Oh, Be- but I mean, that's the point. It's that's girl, boxes. This no shade RuPaul's for, drag race for local stars. drag. I'm not saying the drag is bad. I'm not. I am. About- so like, <laughs> I am saying that. <laughs> no, it's not that it's bad. It's, it's not that it's bad. It is that it doesn't meet the requirements of this competition. This is too simple. It's a, okay, and this it's- is all stars. There's no way that you pack this for an all stars competition, Monica. But Monica's not an all star, so this is what she thought would win. You could play basketball at your local park and be known for playing basketball, right? Or you could play for the NBAs. Like this is your NBA moment. So it's like what you bring on to this. I court just matters. don't like my whole thing is like you people can think that we're over criticizing, but this is my this is my thing. We are on season 15 of the original season, and we are on season 8 of All Stars. There is a thousand million other franchises that air continuously all year long. There is no reason why you're packing this to any season of Drag Race, regular or not. My thing is like... You should know better. This just... I'm sorry. This fucking sucks. Like, this is the lame games to its truest. Like, even if she went this far and she came out like in this, like, this is fucking abysmal. And the fact that this season came after all winners... Trash. Like this black suit, like black what? I oh my god! Just take this shit off the screen. Underwhelming. Nice. I'm, I'm gonna report this post. No, I want to see. Uh, no. no, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the fan games later. Okay. We're gonna talk about the fan that games. That was just a preview. That was just a. <laughs> you I'm gonna need some poppers during that. Are gonna go. <laughs> so look forward to that episode. Oh, 
massive. I just we bought this Wellington at Target. It was eight dollars. Oh yeah. So this cute. is cut. It's you, so cute. Can you clack her again? It's not like a. It's a. It's not a clack. It's a Target it's clack, not a boxer's clack. It's like. Ah, I like it. Yeah. Um. So the winner of this of the challenge was Candy Muse. Deserved. Well deserved. And by Kate in the bag. about time. He went against Angeria, Paris, Van Michaels, Dupree, Balenciaga, De Davenport, RuPaul, Charles, Visage. Yeah, and she won against Angeria. Um, Winner so another thirty thousand. Thirty thousand, five thousand dollars for the challenge. Thirty thousand dollars. That was um, cut. All that money, thing. bitch. Candy got rich off of one episode. She should yeah. donate to donate to Monica. <laughs> If she wants to be a real <laughs> sister, give Monica the funds so she can get some good wigs and good outfits. You know what I have to say? <laughs> you are Monica. <laughs> you're Monica. No, you're literally Monica, not even Lewinsky. Yeah, Monica, when you hear not this, just remember that. <laughs> you know, it's like, like real recognized real. Yeah, like, so I'm, like. It's like, no shade. It's, it's, it's true. Of no amethyst. Shade. We said we're not judging your drag. We're judging it to what the competition is. The same way we will watch sports is the way we're watching this. Yes. Like, it's a sport. This is a sport. And I'm just saying, like, baby, don't you ever show up on that runway wearing Sheen and Fashion Nova. Even if they give you a that bitch, That bitch used the express shipping on Sheen and went crazy. If anyone is a Monica supporter or wants to help her out, make sure to check out her merch yeah. on her page. Support her. Support the queens. Give her some money. And you also get to meet other local drag queens. So No, yeah. Go go run it up on Monica's page and get her some money. She needs it. <laughs> okay, so congratulations to Candy. Candy, mwah. Um, And then at the bottom, we have James and Kahana. And Kahana's just like, you know, I'm ready to go. You know, I've been at the bottom three times. Yeah. I know that you guys are, you know, the right thing is for me to go. So I'm not going to act like, you know, I want to fight for this. Like, it's, you know, I, it's okay. Like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and I thought it was fucked up because Kahana did not deserve to be on that bottom. Jimbo deserved to be on that bottom. Speak on it. Jimbo deserved to be on that bottom. But then I feel hypocritical because when Jinx was, was competing, I wanted Jinx for production to to throw jinx a bone and you know so do i agree challenge. do i agree that jimbo was thrown a bone no because it's not fair because kahana and other queens that are doing way better it's like you know like it they're, they're doing good so it's fucked up that automatically because jimbo is safe even though he did it bad then kahana is at the bottom yeah it's fucked up. It's fucked up. And that's something that when I was watching Roscoe's, Nisha Lopez made, um, said that one of the things that she that she has a problem with production is that, like, production changes, like, the outcomes of situation based on the things, on the queens that they favor. They change their standards. You know? So it's like they change it's their not standards. the first time we've seen it, yeah. But it's true. Like, if, if Kahana was at the bottom on Snatch Game for not being funny because Jimbo was funny, then Jimbo should be at the bottom this thing because she didn't do a good performance like Ahana did. Oh, that that part. It it's so it, it, it comes down to what Rue says too in, in Down Under where it's like the it factor will always overpower. But she had no positive. it factor. There was no reason why Jimbo was saved. Okay, well, okay. I'm not lying there. But in who Jimbo is at all times. I mean, yeah, but you know, you that was that Rue was has a boner for Jimbo. I mean, it's obviously it like Rue picks every season like a queen that like with Georges and when like Crystal Versace when he always used the phrase, "Oh, you are born for drag," <laughs> like all that shit. Like, I feel like Rue just has a boner for Jimbo, hence why sh she brought him from fucking Canada to compete for the third time. And like you can see the favoritism. I, I remember seeing when I first saw the um, spoilers on Reddit like months back they said that there's a lot of like in production gossip about like favoritism and like i can loki kind of see it i feel like it's kind of warranted because jimbo's phenomenal but something like this like i genuinely believe it should have been uh james and jimbo yeah and but james then... was still gonna go home and james was still gonna go home yeah bitch but production didn't even want to have these hoes yeah, pro... taste yeah. of that. like yeah like, they would have took and y'all know damn well they're like all right 
Let's if anything, let's get Candy the moment to win and do this. And they would have manilled her, in my opinion. If 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 but honestly, if Jimbo was there, put it out, voted her out. I don't think Candy would have voted out Jimbo because they have an alliance, and I feel like Candy would have voted out Jane still. That's it, and would have kept going. But then that's annoying now because last I think that last I think week. Oh, Hold on, hold on. Because last week Jessica had to go to the bottom because Heidi left the competition, and she didn't deserve to be in the bottom. So it's like this time I feel like fuck it, like Jimbo deserved to be in the bottom, and yeah. y'all didn't let her slide. Like Jessica was good; they knew we all knew she was straight, right? You know, she hasn't. I don't know. Also, like the the Mitches all could have switched up their votes last minute, but they didn't. Yeah, no, I agree, and I feel like Candy would have still voted James out because. She has an alliance with Jimbo, and I feel like just production just didn't want to risk putting Jimbo in up for elimination, and it be another Pangina Hills moment, and they eliminate Jimbo because she has three wins. I think that's really what happened, Uh and I feel like, in a way, production didn't show their hand because it's like, you know, is this Jimbo season? Like, is this her crown? Is it already signed her name? I think it is. I think it is, too. Um, If it is, I'm gagged. On because why i'm not because no shade like if you look at other normal seasons all stars and regular it's already episode six and this is candy's first win and there's only about five or six queens left like yeah but candy remember has that fucking... one all stars where fucking rue at the end made bitches dance and then other bitches got four stars and then the other but it's whole... not like that it's not that type of season whereas this it's like but jimbo yeah. has three wins and it's episode about to be seven and then whatever he wants episode nine i don't know i just think it's too late for catch up for any other queens i feel like we're just kind of watching like when we watch jinx season or oh, sasha's but, like but this is what I don't, I don't understand if the voting starts on the 14th how does that but there has to be like what is what's in between are we getting a bye week like i don't know i don't know they're probably gonna be off for a week are we getting a reunion mo- mo- probably i Rider don't know strike. i don't know i really don't know I don't know how the schedule is panning out. Um, if any of our listeners know any inside tea, Reddit tea, let us know. But with that said, that has been the tea. Now you just said the shade, baby. Make sure you guys are following us on Instagram at the Talk Podcast and on Twitter at the Talk Podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube at the Reality Rundown. That's where you watch all of our video episodes on YouTube on the Reality Rundown. And they're good. So make sure that you guys go over there and subscribe. Thank you so much for another week of much love. Tucking and sucking and And James Mansfield, that was the worst fucking outfit I've ever seen in my entire existence. And oh, I need a <laughs> shot after this. That is my call. Ciao. We'll see you next week. That's all she wrote. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>